today's source is an ebook, so I can't throw it at my keyboard, unfortunately. It's called A Study of Household Spirits of Eastern Europe by Ronessa Avila. Avila? Avila? I haven't touched Slavic folklore at all yet on this channel, so I'm glad to talk to you today about the Kiki Mora. It's a shame this creature isn't better known in the English-speaking world because it's super interesting. Also, before we get started, I just wanted to mention that the best thing that you can do to help my channel grow is to give this video a like. It's free, and you're helping me more than you realize. Roll the intro. It's not known for sure what the origin of the word Kikimora is, but in various Slavic languages it's thought to mean something like scarecrow, and parts of it might mean things like nightmare and wicked. In certain Slavic countries, if you call someone a Kikimora, it's like calling them a hag or an untidy person, but it can also be more positive and refer to a hard worker. Kikimora are spirits that will take residence in your home. If you hear creaking, scratching, or pots clattering in the middle of the night, you may have a Kikimora. In the morning, you may find your yarn tangled and the stitches of whatever you've been sewing pulled out. When the morning comes, they turn invisible and slink into crevices in cellars, attics, behind the stove or under the floorboards. Kikimora will live in inhabited homes, but will be drawn to any building with something creepy or cursed about it, such as buildings near a cemetery or crossroads, which crossroads have some cultural significance I'm not aware of yet, and, in, and also in houses that burned or where someone committed suicide. Kikimori, which is the plural of Kikimora, are hyper. They run around quite fast and can also see quite a distance away. They turn invisible whenever they please. Kikimora like to spin, and I should mention that when I talk about spinning, I don't mean spinning like spinning around like a top, I mean like working with thread like like with one of the wheel things. I, I figured I'd mention that, because uh, that might not immediately come to mind. It probably wouldn't for me. Anyway, they spin all night, and they like to spin especially at times when it is forbidden to spin, such as on Fridays at midnight and on Christmas Eve. Some Kikimori like to live in swamps and forests rather than in your home, especially dark and creepy forests and swamps. Forest Kikimori and their partner, the Leshi, will drag lost people off into the forest, never to be seen again. Don't walk in a pea field in the summer, because you may encounter a Kikimora with a pan large enough to fry you on and the intent to do so. A kind of Kikimora called the Balotnik dwells in swamps and dresses in a coat of moss. She kidnaps children, and if she's feeling lo lonely, she may enter your home in the night, leaving a trail of wet swamp water footprints. The Kikimora has an association with bog witches, such as the infamous Baba Yaga, and are often to blame for diseases, hysteria, and fever. A kikimora is created generally when something disturbing happens, such as when children die wrongfully or in an unholy matter, such as a miscarriage, an abortion, or in a child that hasn't been baptized yet. They're also created when a physically disabled child, with no arms or legs for example, dies, or when a child is buried under the foundations of a house, which was common practice. A kikimora will also be created at the grave of a suicide victim, 
or if a parent curses their child. A child kidnapped by a Kikimura is doomed to become one themselves. The stolen child will be replaced with something in return, such as an enchanted object or even a mossy log. This is oddly familiar to fairy abductions, if you saw that video. A woman who dies during labor may also become a Kikimura, and an elderly female ancestor whose soul lingers too long in our world may as well. Perhaps the most interesting way a Kikimura is created is if a black cat leaps over a recently made grave. The corpse will then rise as either a vampire or a Kikimura. She will also enter your home if you unwittingly invite her in. She may disguise herself as a lost child or an animal, plant, or object that you p pick up and bring home. If you pay someone to do renovations and are rude to them and complain about their work, they can pay a sorcerer to capture a Kikimora spirit inside of a Chudinka, which is a wood or cloth doll soaked in blood which the angry carpenter will hide inside of your wall. These types of Kikimori are typically aggressive. There's a male version of the Kikimora that will seduce women by entering through the chimney and making themselves appear as a lost lover. He'll also punish women who have premarital sex, which is pretty weird, but I guess he's uh, old school like that. Uh, he'll leave gifts like combs or jewelry on the, on the road for her, and if she picks it up and brings it into her home, it will turn to ash and uh, he will come and attack her. If she survives the encounter, she will become pregnant which is kind of a hypocritical punishment for premarital sex, I must say. Anyway, when the child is born after a three-year gestation period, the child will be a black, hairy, hunchbacked creature with hooves and small eyes. Much to the relief of the mother, the spirit returns to take away his child. Children that don't quite fit in were sometimes called kikimori and gossiped about. There are tales of very bright children learning to read at too young an age, and the parents would have to put a stop to it for their protection. A kikimora will typically appear as an ugly hunchbacked hag with long messy hair covered by a kerchief as is typical of married Slavic women. She may also resemble a female ancestor, depending on how she was created. Typically, she is scrawny, unkempt, and wearing dirty, ragged clothing. She has sparse, short feathers or wool. She has a tiny head, goat horns, and a tail, as well as bulging eyes, and a long, thin nose or beak, as well as clawed crooked, hairy hands with bony fingers, long arms, and short legs ending in chicken feet. They are so thin that they avoid going outside because they can be blown away in the wind. Rarely she will appear as a temptress, being pretty with uncovered flowing hair and a simple dress. At night, the Kikimora creeps out of her hiding spot to do her mischief. She will spin, weave, and sew, but she's comically terrible at it. Any sewing work you haven't hid from her will be found with yarn tangled and the stitches uneven, and despite working all night long, she makes next to no progress. Because of this, Slavic women will recite protection prayers to keep the Kikimora away from their work. If you keep a tidy house and live a traditional life, she will favor you and do less damage. If kept happy, she may finish chores such as baking bread, washing dishes, and she may even take care of children or animals, such as by rocking a sleeping infant or sending them good dreams 
or feeding and grooming animals. If you leave your home in a way she approves, she may even act as a guardian, stopping fires from breaking out with her magic. If for whatever reason she doesn't like you, perhaps if you have an untidy house, she will make noises in the night, moaning, whistling, whining, scratching, stomping, or clanging pots and pans. She'll also break dishes and turn your dairy sour. Doors will open and slam shut as she runs quickly from one room to the next. Her feet will sound like scuttling cockroaches and mice as she does so. She'll flip chairs and tables and scrape furniture, or even make them bounce if, as if dancing, all for the purpose of stopping your sleep. She'll even set kitchen towels on fire. If she makes it to your room, she'll tug at the sheets, pull your earlobes, pull out your hair, and tickle children until they scream. If you get up and see her, she'll throw things at you, whether it be shoes or coals, whatever's nearest. She'll also troll your animals, plucking feathers, scaring hens so they don't lay, shearing sheep's wool, causing horses to stampede, and causing milk in cows and goats to dry up. If you wake up and see swarms of spiders and rats and bats, they're actually a fake illusion created by her that she'll stop only when you leave her a gift. A Kikimora may actually be rather useful to have around if just for her prophetic knowledge. If she sits and lingers near the front door, bad news and misfortune will follow. If she cries and moans, it is a death omen. And if you're allowed to witness or just hear her spinning, someone will probably die. She is compared to the fates, past, present, and future, being an old fortune-telling hag. The wheel of hers is an ancient symbol of fate. Um, consider the sun wheel, for example. Uh, which the swastika, interestingly enough, is actually a variation of, which is why it's used in India and ancient Europe. Anyway, the Kikimora's wheel uh, that she spins has some magic associated with fate that has to do with its symbolism. If you want to hold her ransom for her fortune-telling capabilities, listen for her child crying. It will be emanating from a point on the floor, and if you throw a cloth on the ground there and hold it in place, she will be unable to find and comfort her child. And she will tell you anything you ask if it means getting her child back. The Kikimora may have originally been two creatures, the Kikimora and the Mara. But with time, the two merged and became one. The Mara is often thought of as an explanation for sleep paralysis. For those of you who may not know, because I didn't, sleep paralysis is when you wake up in the middle of the night and you're unable to move, but you're fully aware and able to see. It's somewhat stunning and scary, and sometimes people will even see visual hallucinations. These visual hallucinations, referred to as a sleep paralysis demon, typically take the form of a demon-like creature that sits on your chest and stops you from breathing. This is exactly what the Mara does to you. She sits on your chest in your sleep, crushing your lungs. You scream, but no sound comes out, and she may give you some sensation like she's sucking your blood like a vampire, but she doesn't actually do it. When you wake up, you'll find a pale blue mark on your chest where she sat. The Mara won't kill you in your sleep directly, but with time, her pestering will cause you to grow ill and depressed, which in severe cases will cause you to die of the affliction or have thoughts of suicide. The Mara is related to the Slavic goddess Marina and takes the form of some living person's soul that leaves them during the night. Alternatively, she may pass from a witch's lips in the form of a butterfly. 
She comes to you in your nightmares and clouds your vision with mist, distorting your sense of reality and pushing you towards dangerous places. You can curse her by saying, the more oppressed me, but I'm not sure how much good that does, really. If you want to keep the Kikimora out of your home, you can block the keyholes, since she can slink through those, being more spirit than physical being. You can also leave a broom upside down leaning against the door, and she won't be able to pass through it. You can place a belt on your bed sheets, and she may not be able to do her sleep paralysis thing on you. Also, it's a good idea to recite a prayer or poem before you go to bed to ward her away. You can also bury silver near the entrances of your homes and protect smaller holes such as faucets and windows with crosses of chalk and coal and she won't be able to come in since she's been sort of assimilated with uh, demons during Christian times. You can also wear a protection amulet around your neck or wrist made of purple loose strife. White onions and black beads are also charms that keep her away, which is kind of interesting because onions also keep away vampires. Uh, Bibles and crosses also keep them away since they're allergic to pastors. Also, when she sits on you, you can just manage to move the big toe of your right foot. Doing so allows you to start moving. If you really need to get rid of her, you can glue camel wool to the arch of the kitchen stove using a kind of resin and she may disappear. If the spirit was created because of a child, you can cut a cross into the Kikimora's head and they will turn back into a human but the child will be mute, stammering, and have poor memory or dementia, so this isn't really the ideal method. Alternatively, you can get a sorcerer who, incidentally, I imagine would have an infomercial and a 1-800 number to come and help you, and in the case of the Chudinka, which was that um, doll covered in blood that holds the Kikimora spirit that I mentioned before, he'll probably be helping you find the very doll he created. You may have to hack your wall open with an axe to find it. You must say, here's to you and here's for that, while you chop away at your wall. Once you find the doll, burn it to destroy the spirit. On March 17th is the Slavic holiday Gerasim Gracevnik. And on that day, you can get her to leave with the following ritual. Sweep and clean the corners of all your rooms, the hearth, the basement, and the attic, or anywhere else where she would be likely to hide. You must also recite, Get out of here, Kikimora. Get away quickly from my home, or I will chase you with iron bars. I will set you on fire with fiery fire. I will pour black pitch on you. My words are strong and cast from now up to a century. After this, take the dirt and debris you scooped up and take it far from your home and burn them. Once you remove a Kikimora, they'll be unable to return so long as rook birds are around your house. When the birds migrate up to the heavens in the autumn, since that's where they thought they went. They had no way of knowing that they migrated south, so the Slavic people actually thought that birds flew off to the heavens, which is really cool. Um, when the rook bird flies away, as I was saying, it's easier for the Kikimora to return, since rooks keep away evil. If none of those methods have worked for you, or it's just not convenient to get camel wool or a local sorcerer, you can take a more, if you can't beat them, join them approach. To appease the Kikimora, keep your house clean and get ferns since she likes them. Wash your dishes and cutlery in water that came from the ferns, and never again will she damage them. Juniper scares her, so you can use it to keep her away from your animals. 
Another charm for protecting animals is hanging a broken pot by its neck from the ceiling above the animals or to get special magic rocks. For those of you who actually stuck around to the end of the video, tell me what you thought of this unique and relatively unknown spirit. Next time I'll talk about something to do with Halloween. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.